What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well, wherever you are in today's video, we've got Dr. Sam Richards, a professor at Penn State University. I'm a big fan of his content, and I'll link the full-length video from which this clip is taken in the description below. He consistently puts out thought-provoking material. Whether you agree with him or not, these are exactly the kinds of discussions that should be happening in universities. Discussions that, unfortunately, are becoming rare in many of today's left-leaning institutions, where the focus seems more on indoctrination than on fostering critical thinking. In this clip, Dr. Richards dives into the statistics on cops and black crime in America, sparking a much-needed conversation. Let's get into it. into it. All right, here we go. Let's talk about Black Lives Matter. So this guy started it, and here's what he said. Read that. The press is black people, right? It's bigger than football. Oppresses black people. And we're talking about violence. This initially emerged as a result of violence against black people, killing black people, okay? Go to the next slide. What's it take? This, hap this is from just last week in St. Louis. Protests that arose as a result of the, the, the plea of police killing a young black man who was running from them and they were driving away from them and where all sorts of things happened, but the police was, the police officer got off. And so people went out into the street. And so the question is, what's it take to get people out into the street? Um, I think it takes like, I don't know, just killing, like, when they realize, like, their own people or their own kind is getting shot or getting killed or being oppressed by the cops, that's when it just takes them, like, this is just it, like, I have to protest. I have to protest. It's yes. It's done. Yeah. Something happens, something I see, it's just, it's done, I'm, I'm out, I'm mm -hmm. in the streets. So let's look at the data because I see signs like this, I ple police must stop shooting us. It's a genocide. I was going to put a sign up and I didn't take it down. Someone had a sign that said, it's a genocide of black people. Mm -hmm. right. Genocide of black people. Okay? So we're going to look at the data here. Go to the next one. People, how, people were killed by the police in 2016. How many people were killed by the police in 2016? What do you think? I don't want to guess because I got it so wrong last time. No, that's okay. No, <laughs> guess, guess, guess. That's what this is about. I'm going to say 1,000. Um, this is all people. It's all people? All people. Wow. I think a thousand too. What do you all think? What do you think? Come up with a number. Say it to the person next to you. What do you think? Dude, what do you think? 500? I don't know. I'm just like, I just always like... What do you think, bro? What's that? Two, three hundred? What do you think? How much? Like it was last time. 15, 144. Like, okay, thanks. All right, here we go. 2016, 963. Okay? You both nailed it. Yeah. You're good. Okay. And who are these people? What's their background? Right? Who are the people that got killed? Of 963, how many do you think were black? Um, I would say about 600 will be black. 600. And then like the rest will be like maybe Hispanic. 600 like. black, what would you say? Probably like 500. How many were black? Turn to the person next to you, come up with a number. <laughs> what do you say, bro? I I 300? Seven percent. Dude, how many? I hate feeling uh, stupid. I don't. Five hundred and fifty. Like, Dude, how many? Oh, All right, you ready? Next one. Okay, so here we go. Oh. Oh, I'm surprised. Okay. So we're off, right? If you, you know, if you're, if you're 
What do you think about that number? Um, this is actually kind of surprising. I honestly thought it would be more black people because they show more black people getting like, uh -huh. I know, they like make it seem like black people are always getting like killed by the cops more than It's just hard. That's all I see in media, like on Twitter. I only seen one video of a white guy getting shot like seven times. But that, was, that was just like a couple days ago, apart from that. Uh-huh. What would no, you yeah, say? I find that kind of surprising too, but like I agree. Like I see more media like showing black people getting killed by police than white people. So it's probably just like in my mind since I see it more that it happens more. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so go to the next one. So here's... If you like these videos, you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and help it grow. Leave a thumbs up on the video. That really helps me out. Let's get back to the clip. U.S. population by ancestry, okay? So here we are, 63 right now. In mid-2016, 63% white, 17% Hispanic Latin. You see the numbers, right? So let's break this down and what we're talking about. Next slide. So here's the likelihood of being killed by the police. This is not, you know, if you're doing illegal activity, this is just breaking it down. So you have one in 250,000 for black people. White people, clearly you're less likely to be killed if you're white. And it's, are those numbers large? Are those numbers large to you? Yeah. They are? What were you, like? Is one in 250,000, is that high? No. I don't, I don't. <laughs> go ahead. No, go ahead. I don't. I don't really know. Like, it. It's a lot. Like that ratio is a lot different than the rest. Which you is, can. Okay, hang on. Like, <laughs> okay, but you, why don't you answer it in the same way that you answered the other question? It depends. Yeah, I asked you the same question. Is I know, that high? I know. I know. Yeah. No. It. It's not high, but it still does depend on the. The situation. I don't know what I'm trying to say. No, 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 hang on. I'll help you, though. No, I'm not trying to trap you, by no, the no, way. Okay. The same answer flies yeah. here. Because it, it just depends. It's hot. It's still one out of 250,000 is still high. Yeah. One out of 250 million is high. If you're that one person and if that's your family, like if that's someone in your family, it doesn't matter if it's one out of 250 million. It matters. If, you're, if, it's your, if your father is the only police officer that's hurt in the line of duty in all of the next 10 years, that's still too high. It's still unacceptable to you, right? What do you think about the number, one in 250,000? Um, I actually think that's, I don't know. I think that's pretty high just because it's like a person, no matter like every life matters. So like, I think one out of 250,000 is like, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Okay, but listen, can you, can I throw something at you now? Yeah. Okay. You see, one of the girls in the video brings up the media, and she's spot on. The media plays a huge role in shaping how we see these issues. The problem is, most mainstream media outlets have a left-leaning agenda, and it shows in the stories they choose to highlight. There's a lot of crime out there that you never hear about, like incidents where black kids are beating up white kids in schools. You can find plenty of examples on Twitter. But these stories don't make it to the mainstream news because they don't fit the narrative that these leftist media outlets want to push. The media tends to focus on portraying black people or other minorities as victims while ignoring cases where the roles are reversed. I don't blame the other ethnicities for this. I blame the mainstream media for selectively presenting the news to fit their agenda. Take the case of Daniel Penny, for instance. He was portrayed as a psychopath by the media after he choked a man on the subway who unfortunately died, but the man he choked was a career criminal with a long history of violent behavior, including attacking elderly women and threatening people on the subway, yet the media tried to paint him as just a homeless Michael Jackson impersonator trying to get by. The same goes for George Floyd, while it's tragic that he died. The media often glosses over his criminal background and the fact that he was high on fentanyl at the time. This was a man who had been in and out of jail and had a history of violence including robbing and assaulting women, yet he was turned into a symbol by the media, despite the complexities of his life and actions. Meanwhile, in cities like Chicago, black men are losing their lives to gun violence almost daily, often at the hands of other black men. These stories rarely get the attention they deserve. 
because they don't fit the narrative. The media is pushing that white supremacy and systemic racism are the root of all problems. This is why we need to have these conversations and bring the actual facts to light. The media's selective reporting isn't helping anyone. It's just distorting the truth. Let's get back to the video. We haven't talked about what these people were doing, what people were doing who were killed by the police, right? So if I'm a criminal and I'm trying to shoot her father and then her father's partner, somebody shoots me, then that's not a high number. That one in 250,000, I was trying to kill somebody and I got shot in the process. So that's not inherently a problem. It's either I kill this innocent person, like if I'm going to try to kill you, mm -hmm. let's say, right? Yeah. And the, somebody shoots me, yeah. you're like, thank God you shoot that, shot yeah. that knucklehead, right? Yeah. So right now, these numbers don't really mean a lot. Are we cool? They don't really mean a lot because we don't know what they are. So we can say, well, yeah, look, it's one in 250. Well, clearly, black people are more likely to get killed. Well, maybe black people are doing more things to provoke the police. So, like, we don't know that. We really don't know yet. So we got to go further. You see, like, you got to keep going further. Are you, are you there? Are you following me? Yeah. I know okay. All right, man. Are we cool? Got it? This is a thinking class right now. I'm walking you through some thinking. Okay, go to the next one. So... 233 black people were killed by the police in 2016 out of a population of 39 million. Okay? How would you answer that young man's question? Am I next? How would you answer his question? You, you... Um, I would honestly say yes because I just feel like I don't know. Like, I feel like it's harder being a black male. No, but what do you mean? That like, you, he, he's saying, am I, am I next? Yeah. Am I next? You're saying, yes, you are next? I mean, like, not like, I mean, like, he better watch out the things he does. Okay, because, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah, just You're, watch out because, like, he's kind of like a target, you know? His appearance, you know, he looks like a typical black male, so. Okay, so yeah. if he's holding a sign and then I'm holding the sign, or, like, I don't know somebody else who looks more like him a white guy and a d dude that dude over there who looks like a hippie right in the front row if that dude's holding a sign you're gonna say yeah this guy you should watch your back more than that guy yeah that's my opinion okay no that's cool yeah what would you say I I think that opinion does make sense like I agree with the like watch your back thing but also like watch the situations you get yourself into as well you know what I, like Mm -hmm. If you're in a more dangerous situation, then more can go wrong than if you're not. But I do agree that, like, if a white guy was holding that sign, it would be more likely for the black guy to Got have you. to be more in danger of getting hurt than the white guy. Okay. All right, let's go one more. Are we cool? Are, is everyone following here? Are we good? Okay, we're going to go one more. Ready? So how many of the 963 people were unarmed? This is what we're talking about here, right? Remember the story? It's like, if, I'm, if I got a gun to the, to, to the two of you, right, like I have a gun to your heads, that's very different than if I'm just like walking up next to you or behind you and somebody sees me and shoots me because they think I'm going to do harm to you, right? It's like very different. If I have a weapon, if I don't have, if I say, hey, I'm going to kill these two people and I'm standing here and I have no weapon on me, I have nothing, and the police shoot me anyway, it's very different than if I'm standing here with a knife saying I'm going to kill these two people. Okay, are we good with that? So how many of the 963 people were unarmed? How many do you think, they, how many do you think were unarmed? Of the 963? What do you think? Unarmed. unarmed. 963. We're talking white people. How many do you all think? Point, turn to the person next to you. What do you think? How many of the 963 were unarmed? Okay, here we go. Go to the next slide. So here are the numbers. This was the most comprehensive analysis of the data done by a research team at the Washington Post. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty accurate. So 69 unknown but unknown enough that they didn't throw them in the unarmed category. So they were, you assume that they're 
the likelihood of being unarmed is, is equal percentage-wise, to ratio-wise to the other. And, you know, and in a vehicle, can we be clear about a vehicle? That's a vehicle trying to run over police. Toy guns. A lot of those people, of course, were committing suicide in all likelihood because that seems to be a form. What do you think about that number? Hang on. Can I ask you first? What do you think about that number? You said yeah. 600. I said 550. 500. And you said 400. We're unarmed. You said 500. We're unarmed. What do you think about that number? Um, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of like shocked. I honestly thought like, I'm not saying like the media, like, I don't know, they just made it seem like, you know, the guy was innocent, you know, he was just trying to go about his way. But I don't know, like, this is, I don't know the numbers they took or the guys they took it from or whatever. But I just think it's just crazy how five, 517 had a gun. I would think it would be less than that. Yeah. Okay. To be you, honest, yeah. yeah, so you certainly think it would be more. Way Especially given that. what you just said about looking at your Twitter feed and yeah. Facebook and social media and, and so on, I right? I mean, well, like, we know, like, the media just ex exaggerates everything, so I guess not to pay attention to it. What do you think about the number? I'm actually pretty surprised by it, too, but when I think about it more, I guess, like, since the media does portray more of those stories where the person is unarmed. So again, like it makes me think that there are more cases of unarmed things, but clearly there's not. So 22 out of 233 black people who police killed in 2016 were unarmed. 22 out of 233. Okay, so now the question is, so that means you have a 0.6 chance in a million. 0.6 chance, about half of 1% in a million of being unarmed, black skin, and killed by the police. So now, when you answer that guy's question, am I next? What's your, what would be your answer to that question? Um, 22 out of 233 black people, I think that's a lot. Go with the so, bottom one. With the bottom? 0.6 out of a million. If he stays on arm, you say, bro, listen, in spite of the, how you're dressed, in spite of who you are, if you, are, if you remain unarmed, right, mm -hmm. that's the likelihood of you being killed by the police. I think it's a lot because even 0.1 would be a lot to me. So it goes back to, I, what, yeah, to what Brianna said. Mm -hmm. Brianna, right? Brenna. Brenna? Yeah. What Brenna said. It's like it's still to that one family. It matters. Okay, and so what I'm going to say to, you, to the two of you is, look, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? It's like it just depends. We can argue that that's a high number. We can argue that's a low number. We can argue it's exaggerated. We can argue like, no, man, it's not exaggerated. It's still really high. Like, what is it? You can make the argument in lots of different directions. But what I want to say is, Look, if we're going to make the arguments and if we're going to get involved in protests, like, can you go to the next slide, bro? No, hang on, go to one more. That, if you're going to protest like that, but this whole thing is based on police violence against black and brown people. So if you're going to protest, really step out in this way, you got to know what you're protesting. It's really important to understand what it is. You know what I mean? Is it like 600 unarmed people or is it, hang on, 42 or 48 or like what, what, what are we looking at here? Like is it a genocide? So when I see someone holding a sign up that says stop the genocide of black people at a protest and I'm saying, go back, can you go back two slides? I wouldn't call that a genocide. There's a lot happening here, but that's not what I would call it. And so for me, as someone who's talking about race relations, who sees these things from lots of perspective, it's really important that we know what we're talking about so that we can be confident and have realistic and good conversations. Because I agree with you. I mean, yeah, it's still high. And yet, it's not what most people think. 
If I, if I took a microphone, if I went to that protest in St. Louis last week and I walked around with the microphone and I started asking people, hey man, how many people was it last year? How many people? And each one of those, and even the people who are armed, it doesn't matter, it's a life, right? But if I start asking that question, people are going to give me these really, really high answers. I'm sure 5,000, 8,000, I have no idea. It's like, no, man, that's not bringing us where we need to go, okay? The media often tries to push the narrative that all white cops are racist, but that's just not true. It's not accurate to say that most police officers are bad people or racist. Sure, there are racist individuals in every group, whether they're white, black, or Asian, but to paint all cops with the same brush is misleading. In my opinion, one of the biggest issues facing the black community isn't about racism from police, but the epidemic of fatherless homes. Over 30% of black families in America are raising kids without a father at home. When you look at the statistics, it's clear that this has a massive impact. For example, 70-80% of teen pregnancies come from fatherless homes, and over 77% of black individuals who are incarcerated also come from fatherless homes. More than 75% of school dropouts are kids who don't have a dad at home. Having a father figure is crucial, especially for young boys. A single mother might struggle to provide the same kind of guidance and discipline that a father could, particularly for boys who are naturally more aggressive. This lack of male role models at home contributes to issues like aggression and the feminization of men in North America. Now, I get it. There are incentives for women to break up the family unit, whether it's getting the house, the car, or financial support from the government, but we can't put all the blame on women. There are definitely deadbeat dads out there too. Both parents need to be accountable when they bring a child into the world. But even acknowledging all of these factors doesn't change the fact that we're seeing some alarming crime statistics, according to the FBI. Over 55% of crimes in America are committed by black individuals, who make up just 12-14% of the population. Most of these crimes are committed by men. So that means around 7% of the population is responsible for over 50% of the crimes and over 70% of all violent crimes. These are numbers that can't be ignored, and you can't simply blame them on society or the police. Personal accountability is key here. On the other hand, the Asian community, which maintains strong nuclear family structures, commits the least amount of crimes to me. That's real privilege. Growing up with a mother and father at home who love you and instill good values. I think more educators should be highlighting these facts. I used to love listening to Jordan Peterson's lectures, and I'm a big fan of Sam Richards. I've watched many of his full streams, and they're excellent. You don't have to agree with him on everything. But he's sparking important conversations and teaching critical thinking, something that's sorely lacking in our schools today. Instead of being taught how to think, Kids are being indoctrinated with what to think by left-leaning educators. The beauty of life is that we're all unique, and we can have different opinions, but we need to be able to discuss those differences, unfortunately. Many universities today are shutting down those conversations. They don't want debate. They want to dictate what students should believe. But educators like Sam Richards are pushing back against that trend by encouraging real dialogue. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Let's keep the conversation going. Catch you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody.